Hello, this is Carrie with Fullerton Professional Organizing, and I have a guest. I haven't had a guest in quite a while, and uh, I'm going to let her introduce herself and her favorite scripture, and then we're going to get started, and I'm going to uh, let her tell us a little bit about her business and what she does. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me, Carrie. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. My name is Lori Flores, and I am the founder of Leading Ladies with Lori Flores. And what I do is I help women become who God has created them to be. And I do this through coaching, speaking, and training because I want them to live a life where they can lead their life and their life doesn't lead them. And my favorite scripture right now, the one that I'm trying to walk in, the one that I mm -hmm. try to, to keep on the forefront of my mind this particular season in my life is Ephesians 4.1. And I'm going to read from the New International Version. And it says, okay. as a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Awesome. Very good. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. We all need to always work a little harder at living out what God has called us to do, right? Amen. Amen. You know, you know, Carrie, I feel like as women, we wear so many different hats. And this is what mm -hmm. I tell the women that that I coach is we wear so many different hats on a regular basis, on a daily basis, that we tend to forget that those hats are not our particular calling. Mm -hmm. They may be a part of our calling. Mm -hmm. They may be a part of why we're here, but it's not the exact reason as to mm -hmm. why we're here. Amen. Yeah, because um, yes, like you said, it's a part of our calling. He's called us to um, live a, a certain way with our families, right? And in our church. Um, but he also gives us an order of how, right. you know, God first, then our husbands, then our children, and et cetera. There's a, an right. order, and it's all, there's so many facets. To that's right do that that's very awesome um, that's right. so now tell us tell us a, a, what are you most passionate about in your in leading ladies what just if someone is completely unfamiliar tell us what it's what you do for the ladies Okay, so I serve the woman who is busy with a hectic day of life. She's lost. She feels inadequate. She feels like she's losing, like she's losing in life. She can't help but dream to be happier, to be better for herself and for those who come after her, right? Um, her heart hurts because she yearns for more. She knows that there's more. She knows that she has a purpose. She knows that she's here for a reason, but instead she She's waking up to the mundane. She wakes up, she goes to work or she works at the home and she's just doing the repetitive. She's doing the habitual. She's not living her life to the fullest. When she lays her head down at night, she lays her head down in defeat. And I'm here to help this woman to recognize who she is in Christ, to know that she has a purpose, she has a gifting, she has a calling, she can be better. I help her to realize her goals, to reach her goals one bite at a time, and I help her to live a life that she's worthy of, that she knows that she is made for, so that when she does rest her head down at night and she meets her creator that evening, she will know that she has lived her best life her purposeful knife. And I do this because I used to be that girl, Carrie. Yeah. I used to live a life of defeat. I used to live a life of promis promiscu promiscuity. Mm -hmm. I used to be in the drugs. I used to be in the alcohol. I used to be in, in the bars and all of this. Yeah, places, trying all of these to places fill something. That hole. Yeah. Just trying to fill something within us with other things. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I, it didn't matter how much I tried to fill that void. It wasn't until I truly came to Christ that it was his love that filled that void. It was his love. It was like, I, I, I was this perfect puzzle and it was this one piece that was missing. And as soon as I gave my life to Christ, he filled that piece and I was complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's so good because 
Yeah, we don't realize there is a void within the, us and it is purposely made so that we will fill it with Christ. Right. Love. And when right. we don't, then it stays empty. Our spouse can't fill that for us. It's, no. You know, and our children can't. Right. Our career can't. All of those mm-hmm. things are great uh, things. And God wants yeah. us to have all those things. But um, even, even, you know, and I, I do, I remember, I remember the song, um, looking for love and all the wrong all places, the wrong places. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, we've all done it. And yeah. then, you know, Christ shows us what his love really means. You know, other people right. see his love as judgment, but his his love is not judgment. His love is, you know, this is a better way. Right. My way, I know you better than you know yourself. I so formed you. I that, created you. Yes, he created us. That's why he knows us. And, if, and yeah. it comes from trust, really. If yeah. we can't trust God, then there's no way we're going to know how, how that his love isn't judgment. Right. You know, right. Um, I feel that many people may think that way because it's a conviction. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you're judging me, but it's because I'm already comfortable with my skin. I'm comfortable with my sins Mm -hmm. because I felt that way. I was like, oh, don't preach to me. Here comes the holy rollers. Mm -hmm. I was one of those. I was like, oh, here come the holy rollers. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a holy roller. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Well, I I thank you. Um, You do a good work. And I'm thinking in my organizing career, I might um, need to... uh, to learn how to uh, coach people in that direction as well, because uh, they they t- seem to go hand in hand. Um, yeah. So yeah. how long have you been uh, a leading lady coach? So leading ladies was formed in 2018. Um, it was, okay, so let me rewind a little bit, right? So I was a Luke warm Christian for several years. And you, you know, you may ask, what is a lukewarm Christian? Mm -hmm. Well, I was praising and worshiping on Sunday, but I was out in the clubs and out in the bars on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I was not reading the word. I was not reading the word consistently. I was reading it as it applied to me, you know, the whole what's in it for me. That was kind of like my relationship with Christ, right? It wasn't until 2015 that I was delivered, that all the chains were broken and that I was ready to go full force with Christ. And in doing that, I I didn't know what my purpose was. I didn't know why I was here. And it took a bunch of prayer to get there. And the confirmation came to me, Carrie, at a redesigned conference. Redesigned is a conference that my church puts on. And my first lady pastor, Pastor Rosemary Loya, she asked me to recite a word to a sold out conference Mm -hmm. from the stage. So there's over Mm -hmm. 2,500 women at this conference. And it was something that one of our conferences at at the time. I might have been at that one. I'm not sure if it was, I came to the next one or if I came to that one, which one yeah. was that this the one, one after the Wonder Woman? This one was, this one was the one after Wonder Woman. This was in 2017. Okay. That's the one I went to. I didn't, yes. I remember them still having the Wonder Woman stuff, but it was the uh, next one, I believe. Yeah. Okay. I think and I was so, at that one. Yeah. Terry, so, Brady, so- Terry Brady speaking. Cheryl Brady. Terry. Brady. Yes, that's the one that, that Cheryl Brady spoke at. Yes. Okay. Terry. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so um, the, the word was something that one of my other pastors, Pastor Mary Jo, who was my spiritual mother at the time, she created this, I am a warrior. I'm a, I'm a woman warrior, a prayer warrior poem per se. And all I had to do was deliver it. Mm-hmm. Right? right. So I memorized it and I was ready to go. And as soon as I stepped on that platform, as soon as I walked on as clear as day, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, this is what I've created you to be. I've created you to help women become who I've created them to be. Wow. So I was like, okay, yes, 
Yes, Lord, I will do it. So that was November of 2017. And I didn't know what that entailed. But you know, when you say yes to God, he's going to lay it out for you. It may not be immediately and in order or the way that you expect it, but he right. provides all of the resolution and solution, right? So I, I prayed and I was like, okay, Lord, you know, a, a month had passed by. It was around Christmas. A month had passed by and I thought, okay, Lord, what does this mean? What am I supposed to do? And my prayer was very specific, Carrie, very specific. Mm. And one night I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see, uh, I, I see an ad and it's, it's asking the questions. Have you ever wondered this? Which was one of my prayers. Have you ever thought about this? which is another part of my prayer. And it was like a checklist of my prayer. And I thought, yes, this, what is this? This is what I need to be doing. And it was the John Maxwell certification. Oh, wow. And so for those of, of, of your listeners that aren't familiar with, with John Maxwell, he is like a leader of leaders mm -hmm. and his background is pastoral. He used to be a pastor and then transitioned into leadership. So all of his leadership, whether or not scripture is oozing out of his books, mm -hmm. the scripture, the, the books are still based on biblically that. Based. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to sign up for this. Well, it was a little bit out of my price range, Carrie. I'm not going to lie. And so I was a little bit hesitant. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have to wait on this. You know, I got on the phone with the advisor. I told the advisor, I'm going to have to wait on this. And she was very patient with me. She says, okay, take all the time that you need. Get back to me. If I don't hear from you from a certain, on a certain date, I'll reach out to you. And I said, okay, great. A couple of weeks go by and I'm scrolling through Facebook again yes. and I see guess who just be, just guess who just became a certified John Maxwell speaker coach and trainer mm -hmm. and it was one of my pastors mm -hmm. one of my pastors oh, and I thought awesome. I was like if this is not confirmation <laughs> yes so and another couple of weeks go by and I get an email I get a letter in the mail and it's from a previous employer and it's a letter. And at the bottom of the letter, Carrie, is a check for the exact amount of the tuition wow. with all the VIPs and all the extra things. If that's not an answer to, <laughs> if that's I was not like, telling you. Right? I was like, let's go, let's do this. And of course, there was more confirmations on the way, you know, but those yes. were the, the ones that that really stood out. Besides being called out from the pulpit saying that I'm entering into a new season and not to be scared. Mm -hmm. Those were the ones that stood out. And so I signed up for the John Maxwell program and I became certified in 2018. And that's when Leading Ladies was birthed. After I took the class, after I, I did the, the, training. the whole training, I thought, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to reach the masses with this? How am I going to fulfill my purpose with this? And so I prayed. And my prayer, again, was very specific. And I waited on God. Well, a couple of days later, I get a phone call from my senior pastor, Pastor Jaime Loya. And he says, hey, sis, I just wanted to talk to you real quick. He's like, I have a word of God. I have a word from God for you and so do you have time to speak and I was like well yes of course I have time to speak and Carrie again everything that I prayed for yeah he knew he knew it was like a checklist yeah like a checklist. it has confirmation right there's confirmation yes, yes. and so um after e even down to the name that I had already been thinking and how I wanted to just work with the ladies because God had told me before the Holy Spirit had told me it was just going to be with women. And when Pastor Jaime confirmed that, he says, I'm going to say something and I hope that you don't get offended. And I hope that you hear my heart because I know that this is from God, but I really feel that you need you, you, your niche needs to be women. It needs to be leading ladies. And I was like, how in the world would you know if it wasn't from God yeah. that I had, you know, that I had prayed this? Yeah. And so that's in 2018, August of 2018 is when Leading Ladies was born. Um, I, I, I kind of just did little bit of lives. I did uh, masterminds, which is like a, a closed group for a certain amount of weeks. It's a class for a certain amount of weeks. Mm -hmm. And then in 2019, Leading Ladies Leveled Up was born. And Leading Ladies Leveled Up is a 
group coaching atmosphere. So it's a group on Facebook. We meet, there's encouraging posts throughout the week, throughout the days, but every Monday night, I host a live Zoom with a spirit-filled faith, faith-based curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I teach for an hour and I provide the women of the group, the curriculum, it's theirs forever. It's theirs to keep. And the recording stays in the Facebook group for replays and things like that. Mm -hmm. The Lord told me that's not enough. Mm -hmm. So one-on-one coaching was born. So I also coach women one-on-one completely separate from the group. They can be part of the level up group. They don't have to be part of the level up group. It's just one-on-one. And what I do with them, Carrie, is I hear their heart. I hear where they feel like they're failing. I hear where they want to be and I hear their desires. And then I help them to realize which desire is on the forefront the most. Right. Which is the one that is hurting them. them. First, right? Yes. Yes. It's all about listening to them and it's then listening. you can lift them up yes you encourage them sounds like what we were talking about earlier yes. right it's not about what I think they should be doing. <clears throat> it's not about how I think they should live their life. It's not about condemning. It's not about judging. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Excuse me. It's about them. Mm-hmm. Where are they at? What are they feeling? And I ask them specific questions because I want to know their deepest desires. I want to know where they want to be because it's about getting them to realize who they are in a way that is familiar with them. Mm-hmm. I don't say, okay, so this is what you're suffering from. And this is what you need to do. Check, 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 right. check, check. No, it's like, tell me what is hurting you. Mm-hmm. Where do you want to be? Mm-hmm. Why do you think you feel this way? Mm-hmm. And it may take us six months. Mm-hmm. It may take us three months. Yeah. But the one-on-one, it's more personal. It's an hour. And of course the packages are different, right? So it can be one hour a week, a month with text and, and Marco Polo follow-ups, or it can be one hour a week, every week for a month for three months, for six months. So that's what I do for awesome. the ladies. Awesome. And at the end of this podcast, we are going to have a way you can connect with her if you would like to connect with her. We're going to have that at the end. Um, all right. So now I think that that is great. I, I'm going to look into that and see if, you know, uh, what God is telling me in that same uh, area there. But um, mm-hmm. we're going to move on to the rest of our podcast. Uh, tell me about a time you wanted to give up oh man which one there's been plenty (laughs) (laughs) yeah because we're all normal we have those moments right 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 you know I feel Carrie that the most most of the times when I feel like I want to give up is when I'm right it's right before experiencing a breakthrough Mm -hmm. Things get difficult. For example, um, right now, you know, one of the things that I offer also is is a Bible um, Bible study. You know, and, and that's also in a faith. It's that's also in, in the Facebook group. But you know, when I started the Bible study, both of my parents got COVID. My daughter got COVID, like back to back. Like one week, my dad had COVID. A week right. and a half later, my it's mom like had COVID. You tell everybody this is when the Bible study is going to start, and then all kinds of things work there apart, and then yes. you have to figure out how to stay with the commitment that you made and yes. take care of all these issues at the same time oh yeah yes yes mm-hmm. so then so like so it was my dad my mom and then a week and a half later my daughter and then uh like two weeks later I broke my toe like all of these things and I was like it, if you're not grounded if you're not praying if you're not grounded it's easily to fall off the bandwagon and you know another thing that I do for my church is you know some I have the honor of preaching from the pulpit sometimes and I broke my toe I I fractured my toe on Tuesday and on Sunday I was preaching from the pulpit and if you know one thing about me Carrie it's that I love to wear high heels Mm-hmm. All my high heels are blinged out in some sort of way. And I was not going to be able to wear high heels. So that's besides the point, right? So yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I knew that I was experiencing warfare because I had started the Bible study Mm -hmm. and I was going to be preaching on Sunday. And I just thought, should I let them know that I can't preach because of my toe? Should I stop the Bible study until I can get a full night's worth of sleep? Because it's very difficult for me to sleep. You know, I, I, I fall asleep. I finally fall asleep. I turn over, I hurt my toe. So I'm in pain. I'm awake. I finally fall back to sleep and it's just a cycle. And so just recently, you know, I I have really questioned, should I put everything on pause until I heal? And that's just one of the times that I have felt like I should have given up. There's been plenty of more times, even before when I feel like everything is hitting a brick road, a bit a brick wall at a dead end you know and it's just the the warfare that you experience when you're doing the things of Christ where you have to be prayed up you have to put on the full armor of God you have to have praise and worship music on you have to be communing with faith-based people as well to continue to lift you up and to continue to pour into you the way that you need to be poured into yeah that's so awesome yeah it's good it's real good thanks um, now, what advice would you give someone wanting to do what you do? <laughs> I forgot do about it. that question. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Of course, first and foremost, pray. Yeah. Pray and ask the Lord for guidance. Ask him if this is something that is and truly yeah Mm -hmm. this is truly where you need to be you know you have to have confirmation confirmation usually comes in threes Mm -hmm. um you know it's not set in stone that way but if you're timid if you're scared if there's fear trying to creep in the lord will send confirmation after confirmation so first and foremost pray and ask for god's guidance and then second look for something that is um close to your niche, right? What is it that you want to be specifically in? You want to specify in? For me, it was helping women, Mm -hmm. you know, and I use, even though I use my John Maxwell certification to, to preach or teach at conferences and do leadership um, expos and things like that, my niche is women. Yes. And so figure out what your niche is and ask God to provide something that will help you in because everything that we do carry Mm -hmm. is not for us it's for the kingdom right it's for god's glory and so you don't want to you don't want to miss a step because it's going to take you longer to get there it's going to take you longer to get to where god wants you to be so ask god exactly what it needs what where you need to be and to provide you the 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 classing the the institute the education the format whatever it is you know there's John Maxwell is not the only um, certification out there. There's other different types of certifications. So look into the ones that know will help fit your niche and make sure that you can afford it. Um, there's If there's any type of payment plans or anything like that, and just do it. Don't allow the enemy to stop you in your tracks. Don't allow the enemy to make you, fear, to make you feel fearful. Mm-hmm. because your your breakthrough is in your obedience right and you'll have peace you'll have yeah peace and then then you you will know um now besides the um maxwell training and the bible what have you listened to or read that has inspired you oh i love audible audible books like i i'm not one to really sit and read a hard cover book i do have I do have my own library, I'm not going to lie, but I love to listen to the books. And some of the people that I do listen to is um, Mel Robbins. I really like her. Uh, Tony Robbins, no relationship to each other. I like Tony Robbins. I like uh, Dean Grazioski. I like um, Brendan Burchard. Uh, Of course, the John Maxwell, the John Maxwell books. I like excuse me, Rachel Hollis. Um, Rachel Hollis has really helped me a lot in my growth. And uh, there's another lady that I can't remember her name, but I, I love audible books and I have a huge library of audible books. Okay, yeah, I haven't heard, I've heard of the Mel Robbins and um, the other guy, Robbins. Um, but I don't think I've heard of um, some of those. So that's a good list. That's a good place to start. You know, Carrie, for you that you're an entrepreneur, there is a faith-based uh finance or a base a faith-based 
business coach, and her name is Jennifer Allwood. And uh, the name of her book is Fear Is Not the Boss of Me. Oh, and yes. It's good. She That's is good great. In fact, it sounds like a good one. <laughs> In fact, I'm in her group. Uh, I pay for her member for her never trust a coach who doesn't have a coach, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, she is my coach right now. I'm in her inner circle. And so I pay for that membership and I pay for that one on one coaching with her. Jennifer Allwood, Allwood. fear is not the boss of me. You know, I'm going to say one quote from her from her book, and then we can move on. But your words have the power to either pull heaven down or pull hell up. Mm. what are your words pulling mm -hmm. very and so her good. book her book is very good yeah good um what is one thing about what you do that you want to debunk something that everybody thinks that that's what it's about that you want to put to rest right <laughs> So I love then, that question because I think yes. every business, every career, you know, because for me, organizing is not just Pinterest <laughs> worthy pictures. Right, right. I, I completely agree with that. And there's, it's a very good question. And there's, there's several things that I'd like mm -hmm. to debunk. For those people who knew me before, I'm no longer that person. I used to be very prideful. I used to be, uh, I, I had some arrogance inside of me and I was very loud, outspoken and I could be very hurtful and negative. And I'm not that person anymore. God has delivered me from all of those things. And so if I ever hurt anybody, I sincerely apologize. I hope you, for, I hope you forgive me, you accept my apology. Two is that, I'm not shoving the Bible down your throat. I am not one of those people that has, I dare say, a religious spirit where I'm condemning you and I'm judging you and I'm telling you everything that you've done wrong. Mm -hmm. I am not that person. That's not what leading ladies is yeah, about. We're not here to beat people up with the Bible. No, no. We're here to show love and grace and mercy just like Christ did, mm -hmm. just like Christ did. And then the last thing is I'm not a consultant. I don't sit here and tell you how to make it better. Or I don't give you I, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's everything that you desire. As long as it's of God, I'm helping you to reach your goals. Mm -hmm. I'm helping you to reach your goals, not my goals. Mm -hmm. Your goals are different than my goals. Your life is different than my life. And I'm here to help you live a life worthy of your calling mm -hmm. to know who you are in Christ and to help you become better. Awesome. Now let's get to, well, these are more uh, relaxed questions is what I should okay. say. Uh, speaking of relaxation, we're going to move into that. How do you plan for rest and relaxation? Oh, Carrie, I schedule beach mm -hmm. days in my calendar as often as I can. As yeah, we often have to as sometimes block out time, yes. right? Even if it's just yep. to read a book, audible book or yep. paperback book, um, listen to, you know, something in podcast, praise and worship. We have to sometimes block out that time because we won't really take it sometimes, right? Right. Right. So one of the things that I coach in the level of group and also with the with the women that I coach one on one is you have to schedule your soul care. So we are made up of different parts, right? We have our body, we have our mind where our soul lives, our soul lives in our mind. That's where you find your emotions, your feelings, your memories. Mm -hmm. And then we have our spirit. So our spirit man is made up of those three things, right? And if you're not correctly filling yourself with all of those good things, mm -hmm. then something is going to yeah, fall away. Spirit first, right? Yep. Spirit then first. And soul. then your body. And then, well, your spirit first, then your mind, because that's where your soul is. And then your body. Right. And they all work together. They're all mm -hmm. one. This is your mm -hmm. spirit, man. This is who you are. And so you have to schedule at least 10 minutes every single day, 10, 15 minutes to just 
to just sit, mm -hmm. to just think, to just declutter your mind, declutter your spirit, declutter your soul. Mm -hmm. And then at least an hour a week, whatever day, an hour a week, just for yourself to do something that makes you happy. What makes me happy is going to the beach, is riding my bike, is listening to music. I'm a music person, mm -hmm. listening to music, um, doing crafts. I'm a crafter. I'm a creator per se, right? I don't like titles, but I'm a creator. I love to create. In fact, I'm launching pretty soon my Leading Ladies merch. So lots of crafting and designing. And then at least one day a month, just for yourself, whether you go to the beach, whether you go for a drive, you know, Corpus is not that far from us here, a drive to Corpus, you know, gas might hinder that a little bit, but just a day for yourself. And so again, I schedule that into my calendar and I encourage you and, and your followers to schedule those things into your calendar because you cannot pour from an empty vase. Mm -hmm. And if you're constantly pouring out into others because we wear so many hats, this, you know, this is a bad example, but, you know, I just drank everything that was in here. It served its purpose. But if I cannot continually fill this, what, what needs to be in there with liquid to support my body, then this has no function. Mm -hmm. And this is what we can be sometimes. We can't pour out healthy nutrients and love on everybody else if we are not pouring love into ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and still remembering that while we're pouring back into ourselves so that we can flow out, we still got to remember spirit, man, our God first, because that is what clears up our mind, emotions, right. our soul, and then our body. Very Amen. Good. Very good. Um, if you could step into, oh, okay. If you were it, doing this interview, what would you want me to ask you? What is it that we, you haven't been able to share with everybody that I didn't ask? That's a good question. Um, do you have to have it all together in order to coach somebody? And the answer is no. <laughs> I do not always have it all together, Carrie, you know, and more often than not, I am crying out to God for help. More often than not, I am praying, I'm fasting, and I'm asking for people to pray for me also because I don't have it all together. I don't. And I truly believe with my whole heart, the Lord allows me to go through things so that I can help pull women out of those same things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as long as I continue to stay connected to the Holy Spirit, who is our, who is our intercessor, who is our friend, who is our protector, who is our teacher, right? As long as I continue to stay connected to the Holy Spirit, stay connected to God, he is going to give me everything I need in order to help myself and to help you. Yeah, because here's what I heard someone say. And of course, if, if, if you listeners have confirmation, that is great. But if not, then Put it aside until God confirms it with you. But um, the way I have reframed some of the things that uh, we've been hearing out in the culture is, um, she said, with without God, we we're gonna feel um, like we're not enough. But with God, we are enough because God through us. And in us is what makes us enough. We Amen. draw from him because that is his love for us right. and through us and in us makes us, makes all things possible, makes us possible, makes us enough. And uh, I read a study and I did it on a different podcast, but who he says we are in heaven is who we are on earth. You know, David killed Goliath because God had already showed David who he was. David, David would never have been brave enough to kill Goliath on his own. 
on his own on his own he would have never felt like he was enough to kill goliath with a stone come on you know right right but it was god that had already he had already allowed god to show him who he was which is what leading ladies is all about Showing yes. people who God says they already are and mm-hmm. them realizing, oh, yeah, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. That is mm-hmm. who I am. You know, sometimes yes. we make God's word a lot more complicated than it is. Yes. Now, do we understand every facet and every facet of what God has in his word? No, no. but for the most part, it's simple trust in yes. our heavenly father yes trust yes and just so, trusting when he does tell us who we are we're able to go oh yeah 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 so one of the one of the examples that i give carrie is i i like indiana jones i don't know if you like indiana jones right mm-hmm. in one of the indiana jones movies indiana jones has to cross into another cavern but it's just depth it's just depth he's in he's deep inside the the cave right and i think it's the temple of doom and there's no way for him to cross there's no rope there's no bridge there's no chain there's nothing And it's not until he realizes that once he takes the first step to cross that cavern, the next step illuminates. And then the next step illuminates. And finally, all of the steps illuminate so he can walk across the cavern to the next one. And God is very similar to that. It's when we say yes, that Mm -hmm. he illuminates the next step. Mm -hmm. And when we master that area right there, then we're ready to take it to the next level. And we're ready to take it to the next level. It's like you said earlier, sometimes it is confirmations. And sometimes it is just taking that first step and seeing, you know, okay, okay, yeah. I, you know, sometimes he just wants us to trust him on that first step. Yeah. sometimes- He'll give us confirmations. We we've just got to be able to trust and listen and tune in, right? Yes, yes. So another a part two to an answer of that question. What else? What I uh, ask myself is: Is this all I do? Is just helping women? And the answer is no. Part of leading ladies is to teach leadership. And so I've been to leadership conferences and I've spoken at leadership. Uh, for leadership platforms and things like that. So um, I go and I speak like at businesses or I I will go to like, let's say um, the EDC or the uh, the commerce, the chamber of commerce. And I will host like a lunch and learn or I'll do something like that that teaches on leadership. It's not, it's not gonna be like, again, throwing the Bible at you or beating yes. you with the Bible. It's it's John Maxwell leadership, again, base, certified through that. But not mm-hmm. necessarily. Yeah. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. All right, now for some of my favorite questions. Now, tying it into what I do, mm-hmm. uh, do you consider yourself organized? And that goes back to, do we have to be perfect to do what we do? <laughs> so there are some parts of my life, Carrie, that are very organized, and there are some parts of my life that are very unorganized. Okay. So for example, my schedule, I try to keep it as organized as possible because if you're allowing your schedule to lead you, then you're being led in chaos. You have to schedule everything. And I'm not saying like, okay, well, from 8 a.m. to 8.15, I'm going to drink my coffee. From 8.15 to 8.30, I'm going to do this. No, you know, it's just a block schedule from this time to this time, I'm right. doing this. From you this know, time to this time, I'm doing this. From 8 to 10, this is what I pay attention to. From right. 10 to 12, this is how I fill my day. It's not every thing. Minute. 
Yeah. You know, if, if somebody out there is trying to, to start planning their day to start using a planner or a calendar, I urge you to block schedule the way that Carrie described instead of trying to plan by the minute. Because if you plan by the minute, you're going to set yourself up for failure because right. we cannot determine how much time one particular project is going to take. Right. And, and we don't want to constantly see ourselves as a failure. You got to right. build up to the with the small wins small right. wins build up to big wins so right great. now are you do you consider yourself a piler or a filer do you a piler things down for later i'm a piler you, yeah yeah i've got piles i can just look at you i can just look around my my office right now and i can count piles <laughs> i'm a piler well, and some people are very able to know exactly what those piles are. For yep. some, some can't be pilers and some can. I'm not saying it's the perfect plan. It's just that some are able to handle it better than others. Um, is it easy for you to let go of things? Uh, wait, is it easy for you to let go of things or do you tend to be a saver? It depends on my mood, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, there are times, if it's a craft item, then I'm definitely a saver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it's crafts, I am a saver. Right. Um, but if it's like stuff, if it's stuff inside the living room, stuff inside like the kitchen, you, mm -hmm. I, I'm not really a saver per se, unless it's like an heirloom, you know, mm -hmm. I read one time, Carrie, uh, this little, this one little sentence, and it really changed my perspective on stuff, mm -hmm. right? Because it's stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're dusting it and you don't smile when you're dusting it, throw it away. Ah, that's a good one. That's a good one. And so, yeah, the one I like to use, I think was from um, Peter Walsh. And he said that, um, now of course it just left. Oh, he said, okay, maybe you'll let go of something that um, you just, you found out you needed. But guess what? Most of the time you can go back to Goodwill and pick up another one for real inexpensive. And that really helped me. I was like, that's right. If I let go of a kitchen tool, there's chances are I can just go and get that kitchen tool at Goodwill. It doesn't even have yep. to be full price. You know, sometimes we have all these things in our minds and just the mindset, which is what leading ladies also does, mm -hmm. is changing our mindsets on things can help. Right. That's a good mm -hmm. one. Um, is it difficult for you to, oh, well, I think you already answered that question though. Is it difficult for you to part with things that have outlived their usefulness? Yeah, like- no. Those pens mm -hmm. that don't write, those are pretty easy. Get rid of them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And if I have an overabundance of something, except for mason jars, um, if I have an overabundance of something, it's not difficult for me to get rid of it. Um, one of the things that I like to do uh, every couple of months, because I'm a thrifter, I love mm -hmm. to thrift. Even my husband now loves to thrift. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go to the thrift stores and every couple of months we'll empty out our closets. Mm -hmm. So whatever we haven't worn, whatever is not serving its purpose anymore, we'll get rid of it. We'll throw it away. I have a, a lady who helps me clean my house and she has family that lives in Mexico and oh, yeah. um, they sell stuff. And so I'll just load it up in bags and I'll just say, hey, take this to your sister and she'll just take it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what about those sentimental items? I do tend to struggle with sentimental items a bit. Yeah, so do I. So what I've just recently adopted is um, I, so, okay, so, so a little bit of history. Uh, my mom had me as a, as a teen, right? My grandparents helped raise me. Um, I live in the, in the house that my grandpa built, right? Mm -hmm. 
but I was very close to my grandparents and close to my great grandmother while she was living. And if I have stuff of theirs that doesn't serve a purpose for me, but I know that one of my cousins or a sibling would appreciate it more. Oh yeah. I'll gift it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Because and it's still I in the family. Yeah. Yeah. It stays with family. And I, this is another thing I heard, um, um, uh, men, mentalist, uh, oh, I forgot. Dawn, what's her name? Dawn something from Mental oh, yeah. Mom. She uh -huh. says, if you aren't displaying it or using it, if it's not a decor piece or something that you actually use, then um, you should let it go because she says, what you know she had the opportunity of having two of her grandparents china set and she just didn't have enough she didn't need them both right. and then on top of that i think she was giving uh her uh grandma's uh milk glass set so it's like now she's got to decide do i want all of the milk glass or do i just want one or two pieces to use right. as decor and let go of the rest. You can still keep an item. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and in my case, I had a uh, dining chairs and table that I really struggled to let go of, but the wood was even falling apart. So I had, and I didn't have room. I didn't want to pay for storage for a piece of woods that was just popping off. Right. I didn't have place in my home for it. So I was able to let it go, but I kept one chair and I took the fabric off the cushion so I could put it in a frame. And, you know, so those are some solutions to those sentimental right. items, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now, do you keep things just in case you need them again in the future? I think we already talked a little bit about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I will occasionally go through, I don't know how this happens, Carrie, but I get an abundance of plastic cups. I mean, we just have plastic cups from everywhere and everything, right? We go to the movies and, and you get the 32 ounce or, or whatever, and they give you a plastic mm -hmm. cup and we bring the plastic cup home. You go to the zoo, we all get a drink, we get a plastic cup. We go to SeaWorld, we get a plastic yeah. cup. Everybody gives you a plastic cup, right? Yeah, they multiply. Yes, yes. And so again, what we do is, you know, every once in a while, like, I guess maybe every six months, maybe twice, you know, twice a year, I just go through everything. And if it's not served its purpose, I don't have an emotional attachment to it. Mm -hmm. It's trash. Yeah, it's trash. Yeah, those are things we have to and we talked about this before the recording. You yeah, know, decluttering is not a one and done. It's, it's constant something just like and and we said this before just like we have to keep renewing our mind with god's word we mm -hmm. also have to continue decluttering our homes it's just right. a thing that is a continual thing so we shouldn't feel like failures we should just know it's something that it's a continuation it's a continuing process it's, it's a life process because mm -hmm. Carrie, we see something, whether it's at a department store, at a thrift store, at a garage sale, at, at, at an amusement park, we see something and we like it. In that one moment, it brings us happiness. Mm -hmm. In that one moment, we're thinking that we're saving a souvenir that we're going to remember for, it, it's going to, the whatever. memory is stuck to yes. that item. <laughs> yes, yes. And then all of a sudden you have 4,500 plastic cups and you open up your cabinet and cups are literally just pouring out. It, it causes more mental anguish than the joy of the memory, right. than the peace of the memory. Yeah, you know? It clouds out that memory. That memory right? is not as special anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Let's see here. Now, I think you already answered this, but this is the last question. Okay. Where are you the most organized, but where are you the least organized? We got to show people that we do have our unorganized spaces, but. Yes. Yeah, so um, I am most organized with leading ladies 
And I am, as in my day, my curriculum, my habits, you know, yes, all of that, you know, I know that on this day, this is all I work on. I know that at this time is when I'm going to do this, you know, all of that is, is organized because again, going back to my Bible verse, Ephesians 4, 1, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Mm -hmm. And that's really that previously that was my struggle because you know there was just like fear and the whole um what's the word that the the the, the phrase left me but it's like when you feel like you're not good imposter syndrome you know the whole oh, imposter yes. syndrome and all of that so I clung to this verse to help me be organized mm -hmm. in leading ladies right mm -hmm. and then the area of my life where I'm least organized physically is my office craft room like this is the room where everybody just comes and dump stuff like just looking around full, being fully transparent mm -hmm. just looking around like I have my trampoline my work trampoline right here I have a box of epoxy stuff right here which is for the cups and the tumblers every this is also the laundry room so everybody has a lot of, uh, a load of laundry in here like a basket of canasta or something so this is the room that is least organized mm -hmm. okay yeah um i was going to go back also to what you said now if i can reach get my thought here um i don't know i don't remember what i was going to say but anyway uh <laughs> It was and about, comes back. Uh, you being so disciplined with your business. Was it because oh, of the imposter syndrome? Yes, because I like was going to say, that. Uh, yes, the imposter syndrome. I have maybe two things to say then. Um, I heard someone tell me, and this helped me so much in business, was that you only need to know if there's anyone out there that is scared to do something they say that you only need to know 10% more than most people. So if you know 10% more than most people, go for it. And the rest, all you have to do is put the question on pause and say, I will get back to you. That's right. Because you don't have to be an authority on everything. Right. And, um, and I forgot what else I was going to say, but that's okay because, you know, we can always come back another time and do another podcast, but right. go ahead and tell everyone how they can connect with you if they are wanting some leading lady, leading lady coaching. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I do have a website and my website is leading ladies, Lori Flores.com. And it's Lori Flores, L O R I F L O R E S. Cause that's my name. Yes. So leading ladies, Lori Flores.com. And on there, you know, I'm on social media, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and all of my social media stuff is on there. And it's all pretty much Lori dot leading ladies so you can find the the information on the coaching groups you can find the information on the bible study um, on any type of leadership things that you would like for me to speak on or any questions all consultations are free like the first consultation the first one-on-one -on -one, they're all free they're all via zoom it's face to face because i like to see facial expressions yes. um i say more with my face than i do with my words yes. and so everything is pretty much on my website and that is leading ladies lori flores.com awesome well thank you lori i have to say to the audience out there i think we spoke for over an hour before we even did this podcast i have so technically i have been speaking with her today for a full two hours or so i'm not sure how long the podcast turned out to be but i really enjoyed talking to her and i hope you enjoyed hearing this podcast and uh i want to see you on the next podcast but in just a moment here, I am going to stop this recording and I'll see y'all next time.